General, let me, before I begin, thank the participants in our roundtable today. Two mayors, three mayors, chiefs of police, attorneys general, and community organizers uh, are doing significant work in bringing down violent crime in their communities. There is no uh, one, uh, one answer fits everything. And it's about being engaged and multiple organizations being engaged. So I want to thank you for the time you spent with us today. And I warned you, I'm coming back at you again for more information. <clears throat> and uh, we just met, as I said, with a bipartisan group of, uh, of mayors, law enforcement, and community leaders. And we discussed a, a comprehensive strategy that I'm releasing today to uh, combat the epidemic of gun violence and other violent crime that we've been seeing in our country for far too long that has spiked since the start of the pandemic over a year ago. Crime is hist historically rises during the summer. And as we emerge from this pandemic, with the country opening back up again, the traditional summer, summer spike may even be more pronounced than it usually would be. For folks at home, here's what you need to know. I've been at this a long time, and there are things we know that work that reduce gun violence and violent crime, and things that we don't know about. But things we know about, background checks for purchasing a firearm are important. Ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. No one needs to have a weapon that can fire over 30, 40, 50, even up to 100 rounds, unless you think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests or something. Community policing and programs that keep neighborhoods safe and keep folks out of trouble. These efforts work, they save lives. But over time, these policies were gutted or woefully underfunded. In our conversation today, we talked about our strategy to supercharge what works while we continue to push the Congress to act on sensible gun violence legislation. <clears throat> 